Thank you so much for coming back. This video is going to give you guys tips on what to do while you're in Cuba, how to use the Wi-Fi, all those questions you have in your mind. Is it safe to go to Cuba? Did I have to write paragraphs in order to get to Cuba? I am going to give you the details. First thing that I am going to go over is getting to Cuba. And this is my notebook because I wanted to touch on all these things. Getting to Cuba was extremely easy. I All I did was honestly buy my ticket. I didn't have to book from another country. Like I didn't have to fly to Mexico and then fly to Cuba. I booked my ticket directly from New York City to Cuba. I currently live in New York City, so it was literally easy. The flight was three hours. Um, so when you buy your ticket, they're gonna have you choose like one of the seven reasons as to why you're going to Cuba. Um, I chose supporting the Cuban people. That is the most, I feel like that's the most provable one is, you know, supporting the Cuban people. You go over there, you spend your money with the locals, not the government, and you're all good. Um, so yeah, that was my, that's what I chose on my visa. Um, and then when I got to the airport, obviously I had to um, fill out a declaration form. Um, and then that was, that was it. It was really simple. I didn't really have any issues at all. Um, yeah, it was a seamless process. So for all of those Americans thinking that it's so hard for you to travel to Cuba or you're going to have to be integrated, uh, not integrated, you're going to have to be interrogated for like ever just to go to Cuba. That's false. I came back to America. I came back to America. Literally, they asked me no questions um yeah so it's all good okay it's all good don't worry um so for your stay when you want to book <laughs> book a place in cuba i did casa particulares um i chose a house that was on airbnb um my first place that i stayed at wasn't the best it wasn't like the photos but there was nothing i could do by the time i was in cuba because the internet access wasn't great and yeah, it's kind of hard to com call and complain about your accommodations when your phone company is charging you like $5 a minute to make a phone call. So to me, it just wasn't worth it. I only booked there for like three days. Um, yeah, so I, it wasn't horribly bad because I only booked for like three days. But if I had booked my entire stay at this one location, I would have been pissed. However, um it is so easy to find another like accommodation if your accommodation isn't the way you perceived it to be or you wanted it to be there are literally people who will like open their home to you all you have to do is like tell them you know they're very very nice um yeah so my first house wasn't the best my second home was amazing the family was great i did stay with the local family um it was just amazing um yeah and they always have they serve breakfasts in the morning so if you look um at your airbnb like some of them will say oh we serve breakfast so we have like a wi-fi connection so make sure you just look out for that but in my opinion casa particulares is, is the way to go it's also like i don't know how legal it is for americans to stay in a hotels because the hotels are government ran and government owned so your best bet is to stay in a Casa Particulares um, on Airbnb. If you don't want to stay with anyone else, you can rent an entire like apartment for $50 a night. It's like, yeah, it's really, really cheap. The accommodations there. Um, yeah. Also, I wanted to um, point out that if you do book a Casa Particular, um, they are going to ask you for your passport. At first, I was like, why the hell do you need my passport? But it's because they need to report to immigration that you are staying with them. So every foreigner who comes into the country, they keep close track as to where you are, where you're going. Um, and you will notice this if you buy a Wi-Fi card, they'll ask for your passport. Um, if you book travel through like a Via Azul bus, you will need your passport. So I highly recommend that you make copies of your passport. Do not go carrying it around. Just make a photocopy and that should suffice or have one on your phone just to be able to show them. 
Um, yeah, so they are going to ask you for your passport. The next thing I wanted to talk about was um, plugs. So at first I was like, do I need to bring my adapter? Do I need to bring my converter? Because usually, I, I usually need them. But in Cuba, they have both. So they can support the European plugs and the American plugs. I'm not sure how many voltages it was, but they supported it. I had no issues whatsoever. Um, I didn't bring like hair dryers or straighteners or anything, but I didn't see an issue with um, the power there. So you shouldn't have an issue either. Um, another thing I wanted to go over is the Wi-Fi. So everyone knows like in Cuba, it's not like in America where there's Wi-Fi everywhere you can connect. It is, it's not extremely hard. You just need to get a Wi-Fi card. And actually I ended up like thinking I am going to need so many of these cards because I want to be on the internet. Turns out like I could have cared less about the internet at all. So I have all these extra cards that I didn't use. So just be mindful that yeah, when you go to purchase your Wi-Fi cards, don't buy like 20, 30. I bought five of them and I didn't even use, I ended up giving one away. So I used two while I was there because I was just having so much fun. Um, so if you're going there and you want to just like relax, of course, buy more Wi-Fi cards. But if you're choosing to be active um, and, you know, immerse yourself in the culture, you're really not going to need it that much and you're really not going to miss it. I didn't miss it. There were times I would like wake up early in the morning to start my day and I'd get home late at night and there's just no way in the world that I could care about getting a Wi-Fi and letting the world know what I was doing. It just wasn't that crucial for me. Um, yeah, so if you are going to buy Wi-Fi cards, you're gonna have to go to, I believe it's called um, Azteca, E-T-E-C-S-A. Yeah, that's the abbreviation. But you're gonna have to go wait in a line I waited for about 45 minutes for my Wi-Fi cards, so expect to wait, get there early, um, and have your passport, okay? Um, or a picture of your passport. Basically, they're gonna give you a card that looks like this. This is the front of the card. I only bought a one hour card. They have different variations of the card. Um, and then I, this is the username. So basically when you get Wi-Fi, you're gonna type in the username and then you're going to scratch this part off and this will be your password and you'll just enter that in um so the way the wi-fi worked is i would enter it in if i was in my in my casa i would just put it in and then like the whole house would have wi-fi so definitely if you're staying with multiple people make sure you coordinate that so you're, everyone's not using the wi-fi card all at once you can save it and make it last longer um and then another thing is um to remember is once you log on your time is still running even if you you know log off and try and save your minutes no honey the time is still going to run down you only have an hour so make sure um you're using all your card if that's like a huge thing for you um yeah and also too i some people were having issues with their car if you forget the network and then log back on um you shouldn't have an issue. I honestly use my Wi-Fi cards when I was returning or I was going to leave. I was actually going to the Grand Cayman Islands, but I use my Wi-Fi cards while I was at the airport because the airport isn't the most luxurious thing. So that's the time I used for my Wi-Fi cards. So maybe you should think about that as you're purchasing yours is buy a little extra for your return trip home so that when you're in the airport you know you can handle your business you can book if you're flying someplace else you can book wherever else you're going which is what i had to do because i had no idea where i was staying when i was going to grand cayman um it's extremely important for us to visit the currency in cuba there are two currencies so there's coop and cook coop is for the local people of cuba an easy way to remember this is Coop always has faces on so it. That's an easy way to di differentiate the currencies in Cuba. Um, just so you know, in the airport, Cook is not allowed. Only dollars, euros, and Coop are allowed at the airport. When you're getting around Cuba, you you will have Coop, which is the local currency, and you can use this for markets if you want to go and buy like local fruits and vegetables 
or if you want to take a taxi colectivo the taxi colectivos they take coop and cook however i feel that when you are spending in cook which is the tourist currency the prices are more expensive it's also important to note that if you are choosing to travel on the local by local means um, by the local buses or the camiones um, you are going to need coupe which is the seupe um, the other accommodations they will not accept the seyuse so it's very important to have both seyupe and seyuse it's not very smart to bring us dollars to cuba just because of the tax how heavily it's taxed in cuba um, it's better to convert your dollars before you come to cuba um, either into euros or canadian dollars I would see which one has the better exchange rate. When I went, the Canadian dollar was a lot stronger than the euro. So I transferred all my money into Canadian dollars. Um, it's also very important to note, too, when you go get into Cuba, you're going to want to exchange all your money. Um, and they do have exchange houses around Cuba with better rates. I didn't get into any of that just because I was only there for a shorter amount of time. And I just wanted all my money right then and there. And I didn't want to have to think about having to exchange money later on, but also keep that as a thought as well. One cook, which is the cur the tourist currency, um, converts to about 25.75 coupe. Just remember, you will not get market rate. While I was there, one cook converted to about 24 coupe. I wanted to touch on getting around Cuba. It honestly is extremely easy, but I was scared because I didn't really know. Um, so the first, obviously my first trip was in a regular taxi where there was no one else with me. Um, and those are most expensive is traveling via taxi. There are cheaper ways to travel in Cuba. Um, as I watched other people, I found out about taxi colectivos which is essentially kind of like an Uber, but the car is like an old school car. It's not gonna have AC. It's gonna be like the basic cars, four wheels, but it's gonna get you to point B, okay? And it's gonna be extremely cheap. So um, taxi colectivos, depending on where you're going, could be one cook to like 25 cook. It honestly just depends on where you're going. I took a taxi colectivo from Trinidad back to Havana and I believe in the car was maybe like five hour drive and I only paid 30 cook um, which I feel like is really cheap but mind you a taxi colectivo isn't the most comfortable if you're doing long drives because there's other people in the car there's suitcases there's babies that was my experience however it was extremely cheap to get from point A to point B and um, they're honestly very reliable in the sense that like, if you pay for your ticket, they're going to come, if, um, not if you pay for your ticket, but if you make a reservation, they're going to come by your house, pick you up where you are and drop you off where you want to be dropped off, right in front of that place, which I really, really like. Um, but also keep in mind that the cars are a little bit older. So if you're doing long trips, you guys may have to stop. They may have to change a tire. You know, the car may overheat. You may have to be on the side of the road while they fix it. Um, all those things are could happen. They actually didn't happen to me. Um, in my taxi collectivo, there was a baby who ended up being sick on the ride. So we did have to stop a lot. Um, and then you'll also notice that there are um, camiones. I didn't take a camiones um, just because I found out about it at the last leg of my trip. And now that I know that they exist, when I go back to Cuba, I will be taking a camiones. It is literally like a taxi colectivo, but it's a huge truck. And there is this is the way locals get around. And basically, it is extremely cheap. So you can get from long distances from like one cook, two cook, very, very cheap. Um, yeah, so they're huge trucks. I don't think there's AC, but there's going to be wind, there's going to be people. So I feel like if you are backpacking Cuba, you want to see every bit of Cuba, you are going from city to city to city to city and you want to watch your coins, definitely take a camiones. My friends that I was hanging out with, they were from Germany and they actually took one from, um, 
I believe it was from Trinidad to San Fuegos, and I think that's like maybe a two hour trip, maybe somewhere in there. And they only paid like to cook, which is extremely cheap because they were going to be in the country for two months. So Camiones, they're not gonna drop you off. They may not drop you off right in front of your destination, but you will be in the same vicinity as to where you wanna go. So keep that in mind. Um, it's kind of like an Uber pool, but with less amenities, okay? And more people. <laughs> um, and the next thing is Via Azul. I personally took Via Azul. Um, it is, it's kind of like a, I don't want to say it's like a Greyhound, but that's the only thing that I could compare it to. I've never been on a Greyhound, but what I know of Greyhounds, it's basically, it's the most comfortable way to travel if you're not taking a taxi. So with the Via Azul, you're gonna have your own seat. There's not gonna be anyone like in your space. There's rooms for the bags under the bus. So it's it's comfortable in the sense like you have your own space and there's AC and it's made um, just for the tourists. So you're gonna pay a little bit more with the Via Azul and you're gonna have to book your ticket early. Let me book early because it fills up. So um, the people that I were with on my like day two, day three, they basically decided that day they wanted to get up and leave and go to the next city. And so they had to go to the Via Azul station and they waited and waited and waited for hours just to get a ticket that day. So don't be like them unless you just don't mind waiting. I, what I did was I chose that I wanted to go to Trinidad. So the day before I wanted to leave, I went um, to see if there was any tickets. Mind you, it's best to do it even more in advance, maybe two to three days before you travel. However, I was lucky enough to get a ticket the day before to Trinidad and I didn't have any issues at all. They will tell you to arrive like an hour before you're supposed to depart. Please do so because you do not want to miss your bus to wherever you're going. And they will, there's a wait list. So if you're not there within a certain amount of time, they will give your spot to someone else, okay? So arrive on time and yeah. And also with Via Azul, they don't take you directly to where you want to go. Like if you have a Casa Particular in Trinidad, they're not going to drop you right in front. You're going to go to the bus station um, and you can either walk to your destination or get another taxi colectivo or another taxi to your end point. But yeah. That's the thing about the Azul. Um, and they also make stops, like tourist stops, I guess, to these like small, I wanna, they're not like gas stations, but they're kind of like gas stations in the way like you can go and you can get like food from whatever local or from whoever, whatever small business or whatever. Um, they do make stops like that. So you can kind of see the countryside and make a little stop and you're not like cramped up in a bus for hours and hours and hours um yeah that's about traveling so everyone wants to know about the food i watched tons of videos where people were saying the food was gross my food my first plate i think i had via um ropa vieja um and i got the pork because that's what they're that's usually what they have is like pork or beef and i don't trust the beef because there's i didn't really see a lot of cows however it was bomb like the first meal was amazing um, I did pay like tourist price because I didn't know so I did I was paying like 15 to 20 dollars per meal and I didn't really mind because that's what I pay in New York however if you you know you're on a budget um, there are ways that you can eat for less the food was great however I was extremely sick and I can't tell you if it was from the food or if there was just like a bug going around because a lot of people were sick while I was there like a lot of tourists were sick um, yeah but i was extremely sick the next day uh, but i was still able to do things um and yeah no i was sick for the first three days but i don't i really don't think it was because of the food um but you never really know you never really know um yeah in my opinion the food was great but it's not like in america where you have like tons of options you can't just go to the local grocery store and pick up like mango things that are not in season are not going to be available to you um, unless you're paying like extremely high prices for them so i would see markets um 
on the street and it would be like you know they would have like the pineapple they would have bread and they would have um some type of like pork or ham or they would have um what else did i see potatoes something like that so the way the people cook is what's available is what you are going to be able to buy um yeah so it's a little different however i didn't have any issues any real issues with the food at all the food in my opinion was very good and towards the end of my trip i started to tell the difference of like tourist places and local places i um ate at a mixture of places so i was okay if i was spending you know 15 to 20 dollars or cook for a meal um, but the people I was with, because they were going to be there longer, they like literally taught me how to eat really great meals for like four to five cook. And they, you can go to any like cafeteria and the food is going to be way cheaper than if you go um, to like tourist spots and you're going to get a full meal. So that was really, really great. Um, my pers my personal experience in Cuba was it was absolutely amazing. The people were extremely nice. They were extremely helpful to me. I will definitely go back to see more of Cuba. Um, now that I know these tips, like now I can go and like thrive and know what I'm doing. Um, I would also recommend that everyone bring a light jacket. I know the temperatures are um, higher. It's hotter there. However, at nighttime, the wind is just, it's a little chilly. Um, I am really thin, but even people who are not as thin as me were cold, okay? So bring a light jacket. Um, what else? I think that's it. Those are all like my tips for Cuba. I, I would honestly say like, don't get hung up on the no Wi-Fi thing. You are going to have a blast. There are people traveling there from all over the world. So this is your opportunity to get to know new people. This is your opportunity to go salsa. This is your opportunity to go horseback riding. Whatever it is that you don't normally do, get out of your comfort zone. I am challenging you to get out of your comfort zone, to push the envelope, and to have an amazing time. Yes, stream your one hour, but don't get hung up on the Wi-Fi. That's not why you're there, okay? Enjoy the people. Enjoy the music. Um, enjoy the food enjoy the song like there's so much of cuba to enjoy have a cigar you know you know even if you don't speak spanish you know know how to say hello como estas that's it that's all you need to know oh that's not really all you need to know you also need to download let me see two apps first one is maps.me and make sure you download the cuba map before you get to cuba okay download it before you get to cuba because once you get to cuba you're not gonna be able to download it okay so download it before you get to cuba it will literally show you um it will give you everything honestly it has everything on the maps they even have like experiences that people have done in the past and where they rated it so for example they have in havana they have a free walking tour i encourage everyone to do it it's completely free make sure you tip the guy at the end or the woman at the end but that's how you're going to meet a lot of people that's how you're going to get a lot of the history if you're doing a solo um cuba trip without like a tour guide or if you're not going with like an educational group do that um also on the map it'll have like really cool eating spots it'll have reviews for places it will have like um tourist attractions it'll have like literally everything that you're going to need okay and it works without you having any wi-fi or any data okay the next thing you're going to need to do if, especially if you don't speak a lot of spanish is you're going to have to download the google translate and make sure you download spanish before you get to cuba okay download it before you get to Cuba um those are the only two things honestly you're gonna need it's going to help you a ton um yeah if you guys have any other questions in regards to your Cuba trip please put them below I will answer them 
Um, and then also, if you got, if I left out anything, please put it below. Um, yeah, if you're traveling to Cuba, let me know. I am excited to know who is going to Cuba in 2020. I'm also excited to know what, in what ways in your life are you pushing the envelope? Like, what are you going to do to get out of your comfort zone? Let me know what your plan is for 2020 and what you're doing to get out of your comfort zone this 2020, okay? Um, if, like always, like, comment, subscribe. I am so grateful that for each and every one of you guys who has tuned in to my traveling vlog, who has left comments and likes, thank you guys so much. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. <laughs>